Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our live Q&A today about the organizing business. Oh, my gosh. I'm like a little out of breath because, because it's there's like squirrels outside for some reason that like kind of I, I don't know why they want to eat my house is is basically the uh, the story there. And just before I hit the live button, something was like falling over outside. So I was kind of ran out there, but it's all good. And we have a little rain coming in. So yeah, as you guys join me today, uh, welcome. If you're new to my channel, I'll do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Catherine Lawrence. I'm a certified professional organizer. I am a certified Kanmari consultant. I've been working as a professional organizer about 20 years now. <laughs> Excuse me. And in uh, just this past year, starting in 2020, I have begun working on the TV show Hoarders as a support organizer. You don't always see me in that main uh, frame there on air, but I am, um, gosh, I think I've done like 10 episodes now. Um, it's been it's been quite a journey. It, I've, I've done so many episodes, I've kind of lost count. Maybe it's only eight, but I know I'm doing two um, coming up pretty soon. So uh, yeah, it's been crazy busy. And um, now with, you know, here in Virginia, I'm in central Virginia, the um, COVID restrictions are, you know, uh, a lot lighter than they were certainly six months ago. So I'm also back to taking one-on-one -on -one clients in my local area and contracting with some of my organizing friends as well. So <laughs> super, super busy. I hope you guys are busy as well in your organizing businesses. Um, but that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, actually, I know you guys have been pretty busy because I have so many questions that you guys have emailed in. So um, I want to let you know a couple of things. One, I'm going to leave this replay up. So, uh, and I think this replay is going to be a little bit longer. Uh, we'll probably, I usually uh, answer questions for about an hour, uh, but I may even go an hour and a half today just because I have so, um, just so many things to get to. And I just realized I don't have the chat box open. Um, okay. Okay, so I've got the chat open now. See your comments coming in. Um, so one, I'd love to know where you are, and you know, if you want to comment on sort of where you are in your business. Have you um, started taking clients yet? Is this just an idea? You just sort of woke up and said, "I I want to organize the world. This is this should be my career path." Uh, I certainly talk to a lot of folks like that, and my job, I think, is just to share this knowledge with you. Um, I feel, oh good, we have someone from England. Hi, Rachel. Um, GA, Georgia, Georgia in the house. I got some questions from Australia, um, from East Coast, from West Coast, uh, I think Texas. All right, we've got LA. Also, okay, good, good. Uh, Miss Miller's here. I've got a lot of questions from you, so I'm glad. I'm glad you're here. Uh, maybe I'll uh, get to some of your questions first. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've got. I'll, actually, let me pull this one up. What is this? Uh, Virginia just starting after wanting to do this for six years. So yeah, if you've been wanting to start an organizing business and you find like months are going by and years are going by, like it's time, it's time to get started. Um, I think this is a fantastic time to get started. Actually, um, last year was a little, a little dicey. Um, I, I did make it through as an organizer. Um, I did reduce the, uh, team jobs and contracting jobs that um, I would typically do. I didn't do as many unpacking jobs, which is something that um, can be a real bread and butter, uh, uh, you know, work for me in springtime and, and sort of mid-summer. So, um, oh, great. We've got Canada here, Illinois. Awesome. Um, but yeah, if this is something that's really gnawing at you, I just think that this is a great time to get started. I mean, everyone's been stuck in their homes, of course, for a long time. And um, yeah, I think they're ready to, to make some changes, you know, let some people into their homes. Um, yeah, 
it's a good time. It's a good time to get into organizing, I think. So let's get into our questions. So for those of you who are here live, uh, feel free to pop your questions into the comments. Um, but like I said, I have so many people emailed me just in the last two weeks. So I know a lot of you guys are thinking about, you know, getting into your business, starting your business, um, how you're going to market your business. We're going to talk about that. Of course, that's always a big question. And, um, and dealing with clients, isn't that always fun? Uh, <laughs> that's, that's something that I think, I think organizers come in and, you know, we're all kind of wide eyed and we're going to teach the world and, and everyone's going to be organized. It's going to be like a, this very tidy place. And then we go in and take a few clients and we're like, wow, this is a challenge because, you know, we're looking at behavior changes from them, which they may not be doing at all. Um, and we're also looking at challenges. I mean, people are grieving. People could be depressed. People have brain injuries. They have ADD. They, you know, there's, there's, all of these things that are going on, or they're just moms, they're just parents, and they're overwhelmed, and they just cannot keep things straight anymore, um, or they will not stop shopping, and everything you organize kind of falls apart because they bring in more stuff. So we're going to talk a little bit today about just just sort of the challenges and, and how I sort of compartmentalize, like doing the best I can to bring order and to declutter and downsize and do all those things that I'm trained to do. Um, and that I know you guys love to do, you know, containerize things and label and all those beautiful things that we see on Instagram and Pinterest. And how do you balance that with clients who, <laughs> you know, are, you can see the things that they're doing to kind of get in their way. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. Um, thanks. It looks like a lot of people have come in here. So welcome. Uh, again, my name is Katherine Lawrence, professional organizer, do to do. Um, welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, please um, look around. I, bought, I think I've done like 40 videos just on the business of professional organizing. So go into my channel, go to the playlist and just go through all those videos that I've put up um, the last couple of years. And, uh, and of course, I should mention too, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and I have courses. So I'll, I'll kind of pepper in uh, some of that today. And if you have questions about training and all that, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, usually if you guys are asking me a question that I know is like perfectly answered in a training course, and by the way, my training courses are totally affordable. You can take all of them for under $200. I have courses that are 20 bucks, 30 bucks, you know, you're, you're good. I'm not, I'm not here to pitch you, you know, a $5,000 program. So let's all, <laughs> I'm not that great of a salesperson, honestly, I'm just a professional organizer. So, um, so kick back, relax. Like I said, we'll probably be here for like an hour and a half. There's so many questions, um, coming in and that I already have. So, um, and I'm going to keep this replay up so you can come back or, you know, if you have to go pop back in and, um, those uh this video will be here later because i know you guys have have busy days um but i do think i need a lot of time to answer questions today because i can see they're already coming in here um did i already say toronto toronto in the house here uh um yeah building the website oh my gosh completed any day that's a big deal that's a big deal yeah um let's see who's working on in the beginning stages yes insurance please get insured i usually get a question about that during our lives i've talked about it <laughs> a lot please go talk to your local small business insurance agent um you don't want to ruin your business on your first job because you break something and you're trying to figure it out um so great. I love to hear that, that you're getting insurance. Um, oh, here's a quick, quick one. Um, Nikki, about accepting a oh, when, how and when do you accept your payments? Yeah, when is a good question. I mean, how you guys, merchant services, credit card processing, super, super easy these days. Um, you can use Square, PayPal. Uh, I have a QuickBooks account. Super easy to do online invoices and credit card processing. When I started my business, this was really 
hard. You had to go to a bank and fill out a 10 page application. And then they sort of thought about it and they charged all these fees. Not like that now. You uh, should be able to accept credit cards in your business. Um, I find that's a really easy way to accept, accept payment. Um, I, with credit cards, I would either swipe their card, you know, after a session or, um, what I was doing a lot during COVID to not have people like touch my phone and, and all that handling is I would just send them an invoice ahead of time and, um, they could pay it that day or ahead of time. You know, sometimes you guys might want to, if you're doing bigger jobs, get into like taking deposits. And I do that through my scheduling app, which is called Calendly. I did a whole video about Calendly. Um, and you can actually have people prepay for sessions during Calendly. And they're connected. Uh, well, mine's connected through PayPal. So you can get payments ahead of time. You can. I mean, some of my clients are uh, seniors. And I get that old check, you know, handwritten check. You know, that's fine. Every once in a while, I have a client who wants to pay me in cash. Uh you know, okay, that's fine. I, I get nervous. I go directly to the bank, put it in my business uh, checking account. So yeah, lot, lots of options there. You know, you guys don't don't overthink this and do anything too. I know we're organizers. And so one thing we probably all have in common is we like to analyze and we like to overthink things and we like to find the best tool, the best thing. Um, I will tell you, since I've been in business so many years, I have changed things a lot. It's okay. It's okay to try something out and go, wow, this is really complicated. I'm not going to do that. I remember when I started, I would put together like these folders and sort of print all these pages and these, these kind of folders. And I have a form in there and some handouts and, you know, business card, all these things. And I kind of walk in, I'd sort of give this person like a package, like a printed package. Well, it didn't take me too long to realize my clients are disorganized and they have no idea what to do with any of that. And I kept finding my folder like on the floor, in a drawer, just kind of randomly stuck in the kitchen. Like I said, okay, forget this. I'm not giving these people a bunch of paperwork that they don't know how to organize or what to do with. Uh, so don't really do that too much anymore. Everything for me now is um, electronic. You know, sometimes I'll print out kind of a one page client agreement uh, to bring to them. And then I bring it back to my office and scan it and keep um, uh, and keep the copy digital. I'm, I'm a big digital person these days. Don't like the paper. Uh, yeah, Bell, total overthinker. What is it about organizers? I, I've heard this from almost everyone that I've coached. Everyone that <laughs> are just like. I got to get it per and perfectionism for, for, you know, just put, put that aside. Because you're going to try something out. You're going to have this brilliant idea. You're going to get up in the middle of the night. Oh, I need to do this in my business and market this way and that. And then if it doesn't work, drop it, get to go going with something else. I've done that a million times. It is fine. It's all going to work out. Uh, most important thing you have clients and that your clients are happy and that they refer you and hire you again and give you a good review on Google or Facebook, uh, give you a testimonial. Those are the important things. You need to connect with those clients, you know, your ideal client and form a relationship with them. That's, that's going to take you really, really far. Okay. So let's get to answering some questions. Um, yeah, I like this emoji. Yes, marketing. Arr, I know. The marketing thing, guys, I feel for you because I don't have a sales background. I don't have a marketing background. I've had to figure all of this stuff out just trying to build my business on my own. Uh, thankfully, now I know a lot of things that work. So I'm going to share uh, those with you guys. And there's lots of just great things you can do, even if you're introverted, even if you don't have a big budget. Lots of things you can do to market your business. So let me hop over to um, my emails here because, like I said, I got lots of good questions. I think you guys are going to like this because this one's going to hit. This is it just puts it out here. <laughs> this is the last name, uh, Mr. and Ms. Oh, I think it's. Um, I'm not sure where this person is, uh, but. Um, I love when you guys tell me where you're, you're 
from, but you're, you're going to like this question. Okay. And I'm going to put it in the comments. It's going to look like I'm asking these questions. because I'm going to have my name come up here, but let me see. Did I get it? Okay. So if it says restream, those are some questions that I've, um, I've gotten in my email, but I love this one because it's just like, here's the big stuff. These are my questions. Okay. Figure out my niche. How do I find clients and what do I charge? So big questions. I get these questions a lot. So I'm going to go into like quick little detail, but I, I, I think um, I want to direct you guys to some free resources because these are kind of bigger questions that you may want to sit down actually for a couple of hours and kind of plan. Okay, here I am talking about overthinking and I'm like, spend a couple hours doing this. But these are really, these are big things. These are big things that are going to help you um, kind of figure out where you're going in your business. Okay, so the first one is your niche. Now, if you guys have taken my courses or coaching or uh, you know, Facebook workshops or anything, you know, I'm always talking about your niche in the beginning because it actually fits in with your marketing. And the bottom line is you cannot go out and market to everyone. It, it is impossible. It, you would, it's just, it would take up too much time and you're not going to get anywhere. So one mistake I see you guys doing in the beginning is you say, well, you know, I'm going to be a closet expert and I'm going to be a senior downsizing expert. And I'm going to work with kids to have like a great like homework space. And I'm going to set up that and then I'm going to work with busy parents and I've got a program for that and I'm did I already say design closets you know I'm going to install closets and you go out on the internet and you see people that have been in business for 10 years 20 years have very established business and businesses and you see that they do all these services so you're thinking okay I'll just build a website and I'll say I do 50 things but the problem is you're not really known in your community for any of those things. So you haven't really established yourself as an expert in anything. And you don't have sort of a group of people that are sort of following you and and sort of recommending your services. So we don't want to just start with, I can do 50 things. Now, the reality is you probably can do 50 things. You probably can do a great kitchen and then switch over to a paper system. You can probably you know, follow this and follow that and maybe do feng shui and kanmari and, and all these things. So you can do all those things. And I'm not not saying that you can't. The problem is it's really hard to to find a target market, or like a target audience and then market to them. So I'll give you a quick example. Let's say you have a great a great system for moms. Let's say you're you're a mom of bunch of kids and and you know how to make this all happen and make it all put together and you are it's it's just you're awesome at it audience or your niche is going to be family organizing and you know kids rooms kids spaces so that would be sort of sort of a niche and area that you're going to work in and that means your target audience is going to be moms so then what you're going to do over the next three months maybe even six months is you are going to figure out where are the moms what groups are they joining? Do they have speakers? How can I talk to them? How can I network with them? What friend do I have that's an ideal client? I'll do their playroom. I'll put it on Instagram. I'll put it on Facebook. I'll blog about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to put it all out there. So that's going to take a lot of time, you know, which is fine. But you are going to start attracting other moms who are like, yeah, I want that. I want that organized playroom. I want that killer closet for my kids with all the specialty products. But you, if you try to do paper management, senior downsizing, hoarding, feng shui, closet design, you, you really can't kind of put all that together in a message that anyone's going to understand. Okay, so um, we want to figure out your niche. And I should tell you while I'm thinking about it, I'm just going to type this in. I hope I get the link right. Um, I have a free guide. It's the professional organizers launch guide. I'm just typing in that. That should get you there. If, if it doesn't, let me know. Um, oh, good. I see so many friends joining. Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so 
if you uh, get that free guide, there is a worksheet, actually it's multiple pages, worksheets to determine your niche. And it's going to be sort of a combination of like your passions, your previous experience, either at a job or what's going on in your life. So just pick one now using that worksheet and, you know, kind of filling out all that info. Pick one that you feel passionate about and focus on that for about three months. So you're going to be finding clients in that niche. So if it's senior downsizing, you're going to start going to, you know, senior living communities, finding out, you know, how can you speak to them? How can you get in their marketing materials? Who can you befriend over there? Who can give you a personal referral? So the finding clients has to come after the niche. That that would be my my goal for you guys. Um, What to charge? I feel like that's it's so subjective. (laughs) You guys, um, I did a whole video. LA, a small town, or I live in Virginia, so you need to have a and um, you are going to be based on your experience, your experience, you know, the same experiences, um, you to change my I'm still, I'm still live. I don't want to change my internet access in the middle of this. Okay, had a little technical challenge there. So if you guys are still here, let me know. Yes, connection was lost. Yes, okay, I am back. Can someone let me know in the comments? Oh, no, I don't see anyone here. Um, ba, ba, ba. I see that I'm still live. Screen froze, audio is choppy. Um, Shoot, let me go over to YouTube. I see that I'm still live, but I don't see you guys here. Ah! Oh, good. Okay, I see people. Awesome. Okay. I think y'all are still here. I lost you at some point. But I'm back. Oh, thank God. Uh, yeah, this is the first time I'm... I've lost connection using this new software that I'm using. So sounds like everyone's back here and not sure where you guys lost me. Um, But if it was on charging, I do have a video for that. And um, I'll just quickly say, look at the prices in your market, adjust them based on your experience and don't worry because you probably will, you will certainly be charging more as you get more experience. So, if you set your rate too low, you will know that with that client, and then you can adjust for the next client. So don't ever think that. Um, pick a, a pricing structure, and you can always change it. So don't worry about that. Okay, now that I think we're all back, uh, let me pull up another question. And I have these in my email, so let me see if I can copy something from here let's see we've got one here oh that's a that's a new one let me go to an older one um i've got about two weeks of questions (laughs) that i'm uh trying to get through okay this was this was a really a, a kind of i'm gonna give you sort of the tail end of this question and um 
let me type it back in here. Awesome. Thanks, you guys, for, for hanging in there. We're already going to have a long discussion today. <laughs> so I guess it's going to be a little longer since I kind of dropped out there for a couple of minutes. But it's all good. It's raining here, so I don't have to worry about walking my dog. So I'll be here for a little bit. And this will be on replay. So not going anywhere. Okay, so this question came at a, a fairly long email. And uh, I think our sender is here in the chat. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you're still with us. Okay, so there's kind of a long email that sort of led up to this question, which was um, working with a client with ADD. I think there were some other kind of overwhelming things going on in this very large home. And um, our organizer here is trying to figure out how would you go about explaining the process to someone who is in extreme stress and decision overwhelm? Okay, I would not explain the process. How's that? <laughs> That's my answer to you. Um, the magical thing about what we do, and it's so important what professional organizers do, is we partner with people who are depressed, grieving, experiencing physical challenges, mental challenges, transitions, all of these things. And we come in with our skills, and these are really important, you know, our skills of being able to sort things out, you know, put things in place. We can help that person and we can partner with that person. Now, is that person always going to understand what we're doing? Absolutely not. And are they always going to learn from the experience and be able to just organize the way we do? Probably not. And that might be kind of hard for some of you guys to hear because um, I think we all, I know I certainly came into this career choice and said, oh, I'm going to teach people to organize and I'm going to show them the way. And, and when I leave, they're going to understand, you know, how to do things exactly the way I do them. And hey, sometimes that happens. You know, sometimes we actually are able to transfer those skills. Um, and you should always strive for that, you know, certainly to educate, transfer skills and, and help people kind of understand um, how this is all done. And so I'm constantly teaching my clients um, but to keep your sanity and to make sure that you stay in this business and keep a positive attitude, I would not put a lot of pressure on yourself if your client is just kind of not getting it. And then you need to decide as an organizer, and this is something I cover with uh, my one-on-one -on -one coaching or my coaching program, um, cause I can just ask you guys directly. Are you okay doing what I call maintenance work with your client, which is which means you're going to be going back into some of those same spaces and reorganizing them. So when you leave, the kitchen was perfectly organized. You come back in a month. It's a mess. You're going to organize that kitchen again. That is maintenance work. Project work is when you go in, you you do it, you you know, you set up the closet, you put together the file system and then you go thank you, goodbye, and you don't really work with that client again, or you don't go back and address that same area. So I have seen organizers completely lose their minds trying to do maintenance work because they can't understand why the client isn't sort of getting it. So just have to kind of know yourself. And then I found other clients who absolutely love maintenance work. They love that they're going back to see the same person. They know how important they are. Um, in their life, I have a few senior clients um, that I that are maintenance clients. Hey, I'm checking in. Some of them don't have family, and I'm coming in every couple of weeks and checking in on them. I'm organizing their papers. I'm keeping up with some of their finances. It's great, um, but you have to have a patience for that. So just keep that in mind that it does happen. Um, and I just I really wouldn't I wouldn't worry so much about those clients who are not making those major lifestyle changes, I would just wonder yourself if you can have kind of the patience to work in this industry and and have clients like that. And you can choose your clients, guys. So, you know, you can choose who you work with. And um, I've had a few clients over the years that just, they were not making the behavior changes. Every time I came back, 
the home was in complete disarray. They were shopping constantly. So it was just sort of a this moving, uh, it's just sort of this endless battle of sort of moving things and, and putting things away and then getting rid of things to try to put new things away that were coming through the door and opening packages. I said, enough, you know, I, I can't do this. So I um, have decided sometimes with, with the shopping, I just, it's, it's not a good fit for me. And um, that's going to be your choice of who you work with because you're in business for yourself and you can make those decisions. So I hope that helps. I am, let's see, I'm going to copy, let me go back to my email questions and then I'm going to check in with uh, the comments as well. Uh, let me at least get one. Okay, here's. I'm just going to take kind of a snip of, of this email. Um, where is she? Was she in? I've got a couple of people that emailed me in Virginia where, where I am. So that's pretty cool. Um, but I don't, I don't think. Oops. Let me go back. Okay. I'm going to type a question in. So I have that for later. But then I'm going to scoot back up here to our comments. Uh, see if anyone asked a question before we got disconnected. Um, yeah, lots of great com. Oh, here's one, I think. Da, 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 da. Oh, I'm gonna have to go up kind of high. Yep, marketing. Um, uh, Gail, I, I'm not, sh I don't know. I don't know about grants. Where do you seek out grants? Um, a resource for, for you guys, score. I'm gonna type this in score.org. Um, those are uh, retired business owners or other volunteers who kind of help you navigate setting up your business. It's um, I know it's at least national. I, I think they're in Canada as well, and they might be in other countries. But go to that website and, and try to connect with a business mentor. Um, I don't know. I did not use a grant uh, to start my business. Maybe I should have. <laughs> I, I used personal savings. Um but um, I'm, a grant would be would be lovely, lovely way to start a business and, and get some things set up. I have actually had a few people, you know, over the years tell me they, they got connected with something, but it, it was local. So I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, just check in your your local community and, ch and check with SCORE and see what um, if they can can answer that for you. Okay, so Emily says you have a program to keep track of clients and payments. So I am currently using HubSpot, H-U-B-S-P-O-T, um, because it's free. I've used some others that were like $10 a month or $15 a month, and they had a ton of features I just wasn't using. Um, with HubSpot, I can keep track of emails, uh, store phone numbers and addresses, and just have like a client database. Um, I've used different things over the years, but um, I'm liking that, right? It's actually doing everything I need it to do. It probably does a lot more, um, but I'm still using free features on that. And payments. I, I use QuickBooks online, which is not free. Um, but because I also run payroll in my company, I pay myself as an employee and I have contractors. QuickBooks does my payroll. And so I need a, a little extra level of accounting that I would not need if I were paying myself in a different way. So I do pay for QuickBooks. I think it's like 25 bucks a month. Um, so I'm sure there's other ways to keep track of payments, you know, in a spreadsheet or um, accounting software, but I do use a paid service and it does help. Like, I'm trying to refinance my house because interest rates, as you know, are so low. And they were like, okay, we need a profit and loss statement for your company. Um, I was like, oh, okay. Well, thankfully, QuickBooks allowed me to do that. And I just clicked a few buttons and I could show um, my profit and loss for the last six months or last year. And that does help do my taxes. So, um, yeah. You can try that out or uh, if anyone has like a different way that's that you're not. I mean, I just think doing a spreadsheet, I mean, you could in the beginning, um, 
but I think it would get kind of complicated, especially around tax time when you need to categorize all of your spending categories. Like I can just push a few buttons in QuickBooks and it will tell me, you know, what I've spent on software, what I've spent on, you know, training conferences, all that, you know, payroll, that type of stuff. So I'm just, you know, I'm kind of a level full-time business where I, I kind of need to keep track of things. So uh, that's why I'm using the paid service for that. I think this might be about the same type of question. How do you keep track of your projects and CRM? Um, yeah, so um, if you guys have kind of been here a little while or sort of been following me, you know that I also use an app called Trello. And so uh, I have a course on Trello that is um, part of that course bundle I mentioned to you guys. And, and by the way, you can get all my classes for under $200. So just, just keep that in mind. <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. But in that, there is a, I think it's a $20, $25 course, which talks about project management for how I manage my clients in Trello. And it's kind of awesome. I presented it at the NAPO conference, uh, 2021 NAPO conference back in April. So if you're a NAPO member and you have those conference recordings, you can get that material there as well. Um, but for managing individual projects, I'm using Trello. So I start a new Trello board with each client and I can keep track of everything. Shopping list, priorities. Um, I share that board with my client. So they that's how I can give them their shopping list, their to-do list, their homework, all of that. Trello. So. Um, if you're not familiar with Trello, please take my, either get my bundle, which includes the Trello class, or um, you can get that Trello class individually, or you can get it through NAPO. Um, ba -ba -ba. Okay, let me hop back over to um, my, ah, wow, we have a lot of comments here. This is great, guys. Um, okay, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to answer bell real quick on this. Um, because I, I think I can answer this quickly and then I'll go back to the email seasons for organizing. Okay. I think it depends on the type of organizing you're doing. And so I know earlier I talked about niche marketing, which is like, you have just, just, you have to do niche marketing. I think in those first three to six months after you have 10 clients, 20 clients, you're building your business you can kind of bring in different specialties because I think it depends on your specialty. Like for example, if you are doing garages and that is, that is your jam. If you live in a place like me in Virginia, you're not going to be doing a lot of garages in August and you're not going to be doing a lot in January um, because of the weather. So I know there's kind of a seasonality for every piece, every sort of specialty that I have. For example, unpacking houses and any kind of relocation work, May, June, and sometimes September, kind of early September, but it's going to be, for me, that's sort of May to September. It's really rare that I'm unpacked. And sometimes I'll get a little boost around um, the holiday season and New Year's. Sometimes people take a couple of weeks off at the end of the year and they move. So I have had you know a couple little pockets of jobs in relocation at that time. But um, summer, I can tell you with my sort of higher end, you know, affluent clients, summer's weird. They travel a lot. They go to the river house. They go to the beach house. They go, eh, I don't really want to organize. And, and the, the parents. And so um, spring and fall, fall are really big. So sometimes I'll have a little slump in um, August with my families um, actually, I have a slump right now with my families, but it's okay because I need to go work on the Hoarders TV show. So it kind of worked out that they're going on vacation when I'm leaving town to work. Um, but yeah, the, the the families sometimes are a little squirrely in the summertime because of the travel. Um, yeah, so I think it depends on your specialty. I, things get a little slow for me in kind of January, February. Um, I, I live in an area where it gets iced over. Um, I have some snow days. Um, gosh, I hope I'm not losing connection again. Oh, okay, good. Uh, I got the, <laughs> I got the little screen coming up, but I think you guys are still here. So yeah, I think it would depend a little bit on your, on your
specialty. But I, I have noticed there's a seasonality for um, those specialties. Those big kind of extreme cleanouts, um, hoarding jobs, it's really hard to do them in the winter and in the super of summer. Of course, on the Hoarders TV show, that seems to be when we do them. I've done a lot of shows where it's 25 degrees and when it's 90 degrees. But in my own uh, business at home, I prefer not to do that. So spring and summer, uh, spring and fall, the temperature is a little milder here. Um, okay, it still says I'm live, but the software is acting funny. Let me see. Yeah, I'm not able to show comments, so. Oh, oh, nope, here it goes. Okay, hopefully we are still, we're still working here. We're still live. Um, let me try, oh, I think this might be a quick, See if I can get this one up here. All right. I think we're still here. Um, all right. Would having a degree in social work counseling be something I I could stress? I do not want to do hoarding. Stress like it's something you have. I get specific training. I um, know where I can get that training. Okay. This is super important, you guys. Uh, I'm going to here to a plastic organization, a nonprofit organization. Oh, now I'm looking at myself on YouTube and nothing's happening, but I know there's a little delay. So, um, issues. It may Raining, but put this put it here for dot org challenge. They used to be called the National Group for. Organization and the training on hoarding and any of the brain complications that people have that lead to a chronic problem in organization. Sorry, I'm still here. It just looks like I'm losing connection. Let me see if I can change. All right, I'm going to try to change to another. Sorry, guys, if you can still see me, I'm <laughs> texting my husband that I'm getting on a different network so that um, he can get off that network and maybe I won't have any problems. Let me get on. All right, I think we're back here. Um, I think I jinxed myself by saying that I could stay on this live longer. <laughs> so the internet's like, okay, great. Let's throw a bunch of problems at you. All right, so um, we were talking about ICD. So we have this question about your degree in social work, counseling. Yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely heard of, um, or I've certainly met many organizers who had a background in social work counseling. I think it's a natural fit because you are going into their homes, you're helping them with, you know, potentially a chronic problem. And yes, so I would recommend that you guys check out ICD. And um, I did put a link in that uh, in our comments section here. All right, let me find the question I had that came from our email. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, I think this is mine. <sighs> okay, 
So question about business license portfolio and how to even begin to start organizing a space, which in this case is a closet. So um, business license, if you guys are part um, or well, if you guys are interested in joining my six week group coaching program, we do all the business stuff. So um, during those six weeks, we are going to make your business legit. So uh, people have started that program. They don't really have an actual business set up. And in those six weeks, they get their business set up. And so one of those pieces is business license. And you're going to want to talk to your local county clerk about um, if you need one and how to get one. And if you guys are in my essential forms course, which I know is a really popular course. So I might have some students here. There is a business startup guide in there as well, where I'm going over um, a lot of the, um, sorry, I keep getting distracted because it's like, you're not live, but I'm like, I think I am. Um, where, um, yeah, the, the startup guide in the Essential Forms course is um, where you can find a lot of sort of questions and and things that you need to provide to your um, sort of local government, insurance agent, accountant, lawyer to get your business set up. Um, and yeah, I mean, Laura has a question about the six week program for international organizers. I would still say take it um, because what I'm helping you do is do that local research to set up your business. And it is different. I had some Canadian students and so they, um, their structure was a little different than uh, what we were looking at in the U S but some of this stuff is so geared to your local community that even in my own state of Virginia, there's different counties and some need business licenses and some don't. So, um, because a lot of that is so localized, what we're going to do as a as a group and and one on one is we're just going to um, help you connect with the right people in your community and be an accountability partner so you get everything set up. So um, yes, so international students, please yes, join me for that program. I believe I'm going to start it in September, so look out for emails about mid August. And. Um, I think I lost my question here, but portfolio, you guys, Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. Um, it used to be we, you know, did all these before and after pictures on your website and it was kind of complicated to maintain and upload new pictures. Um, online portfolio, I've, I've done them on Pinterest. Like if I'm just kind of showing a client, like I just want to show them specific images, you can do a board in Pinterest, you know, under your business. I did that for a long time. Um, I still, I think, have have some things up there that I can show clients. But Instagram, it's, it's just such a quick, easy way to show those pictures. You can, you know, slide through and show a before and after picture. Um, so get your portfolio up there. And then as far as how to organize something, um, I follow the same system whenever I go into any space. And that's the, the GDP. I've talked about this before. Gather and, cite, and sort like items, make your decisions, and then do your put away with your containers and your labels. If you do it in a different order, it takes so long because what you'll do is you'll go into the closet and you'll think, oh, maybe I need to buy shoe boxes. Maybe I need a different type of hanger. Maybe we could do this. We could do that an hour will go by and you haven't even sorted anything in the closet and you're going to have to sort and, and make those decisions before you do your put away. So as long as you follow that order, pretty much all of your projects, garage, kitchen, you know, they're all going to kind of follow that, that streamline. So if you're really just starting out, go and uh, practice, you know, get some Guinea pigs and say, Hey, I'm going to come to your kitchen this weekend, or I'm going to do your closet tonight and, and get some practice of how it feels to organize for someone else because it is definitely different. <laughs> All right, I think we did that. Okay, I'm scrolling back up. Ba, ba, ba. 
<laughs> hey, I do have some coach. Hey, I got Maureen here, Joanne. Good to see you guys. Um, so sorry, this video, you're going to have to, if you watch the replay, you're going to have to fast forward and rewind a little bit because of some connection issues, but I think it, it's all good now. Ba, ba, ba. Okay, we talked about seasons, degrees in social work, ICD. Okay, let's see what Nikki has to say here. My website just got completed. Woohoo! It's not live yet because I need to, to get my EIN insurance, professional license, business name register with the county clerk's office. Am I forgetting anything else? Well, you know, um, I would still make that website live. You know, the, the all of these other pieces, your EIN, um, your insurance, and um, yeah, getting your business name let, uh, registered, all of those are going to allow you, uh, well, getting your name registered and, and kind of setting up your business are going to allow you to have your bank account. So you want to have your bank account. So when, um, I would make that website live because you need to start marketing. You need to start getting the word out. So um, it would be lovely if we just made our websites live and, you know, we get 20 emails. Please come organize my home. Doesn't really work that way. <laughs> so uh, you still need that website to go um, to go up. You need people to find your website. Um, make sure that Google can find your business and your website. So a quick way to do that is to just go on Google and say, uh, like my primary market is Richmond, Virginia. So if I go in and say, I need a professional organizer in Richmond, Virginia, you know, am I going to come up? Am I not going to come up? Um, that's a good test. So wherever you live, just say organizing business in, or if you have a specialty, you know, closet design in, you know, Austin, Texas, you know, put that in and make sure that your business is showing up. If your business if Google doesn't recognize your business, you you need to go through some hoops. They have to like mail you a postcard. And so all these things are going to take a little bit of time. So I, I think it's fine to, you know, put your website out live and then make sure you have your insurance and your sort of method for accounting for, you know, taxes um, and collecting payments set up, you know, as you start working um, yeah, that's all I'm thinking, you know, business account or uh, banking accounts and, um, you know, kind of how to structure your business. Uh, even if you have an EIN, you know, that's just a piece of it. So there's different ways you can have an LLC, you can, you know, be a sole proprietor. So you probably want to talk to a lawyer, lawyer and or accountant to just make sure that, um, things are set up properly to pay your taxes and, yeah, start marketing your business, you know, get get the Facebook out there, get the Instagram and start networking. You guys, networking is key to uh, getting your clients. Hi there. Uh, OK, we have Miss Miller here. Um, yeah. So. Um, Right. <laughs> this was kind of, you know, setting those client expectations. So, yeah, a lot of our clients are completely overwhelmed and stressed out. So this is not going to be a one off situation for you guys. This is going to be something you're going to see a lot. If you put your shingle shingle out there and say, hey, I'm a professional organizer. I help people declutter. I help people you know, organize the people that are going to call you to do a lot of that work are going to be people who are kind of freaked out and can't quite, you know, get everything together. And it is not uncommon for them to experience decision fatigue. Um, they can't make any decisions. They're, they're overwhelmed. So I would really fall back. Part of that GDP method is to reduce decision fatigue because we have to keep in mind our clients are already so overwhelmed we cannot walk into their home and go okay do you want to keep this what do you want me to do with this what do you want me to do with that they're not going to be able to handle all those decisions they, they just can't so uh, a lot of what i'm doing during my practice is kind of breaking things down in that gathering and sorting process into to kind of bigger 
categories and then asking them to make broad decisions. So in your case, you've got a client whose house has flooded. I know where I live, that means mold. It's hot and humid here. Um, a blanket decision I may say to them is like, would you allow me to go into this area and toss any you know soft goods or paper products that are destroyed beyond recognition or that that have some damage to where they're not um, going to serve you anymore. And so maybe it's even just something as like, can I throw away all the catalogs and magazines? I mean, this is something we do sort of a lot on hoarders when we have to make broad decisions about very big things and the client is compromised and not really capable sometimes of making good decisions. We need them to trust us to make decisions and then present them with one blanket statement. You know, can I throw away, you know, will you allow me to eliminate all the magazines that have water damage? You know, that would be an example of kind of a broad decision. And then they hopefully will say, yes, maybe they won't. And you ask them something else, but come with sort of one question that allows you to move and downsize a lot of things in their space and then give them a break and come back in 30 minutes after you have gone in and done some sorting and, and tossed some things that they've allowed you to make some executive decisions on or, or something you've cleared with them. And then come back and ask one more question <laughs> and then go and deal with that category. You know, can we put your, you know, winter, items that are all over the floor, you know, can I put them in this other closet to make space for your summer clothing, you know, something that they can sort of agree to and that allows you to do work. So um, keep chunking through, but you know, I hate to say it, this isn't, that's, that's not um, an unusual situation that they're going to be very overwhelmed. And that's part of our job is to break things down into easier pieces and not ask them a million questions. They're never going to be able to handle it. Or by asking them a million questions, they get we give them decision fatigue, which you never want to do. That is really what distinguishes the professionals from the amateurs. So once you can kind of find that flow with your client where you're not asking them a ton of questions, but you're sort of leading them through some some bigger decisions that allow you to work. Now, now you're you're really doing something. Gosh, I have not had a drink of I should have had a drink of water when um, when my connection was down. <laughs> Yeah, this, this is a great question here. Um, how did you get your first client? I'm about to start and figure out how to get my first paid client. So my first, I'm trying to say, I had some friends in the beginning. I don't, I don't, I didn't charge them. I did some pro bono work. So my, my first clients were pro bono and I did a home office. I did a kitchen. I did a couple of closets. I helped a, uh, a friend unpack. I took pictures. So I was like, okay, do I know what I'm doing? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I can I can do this. I can do this for a job. So your very first clients, uh, you may want to have practice clients because you just have to kind of get in, into a little bit of a, a role with this. Um, as far as getting paid clients, and I have a great video on my YouTube channel. It's an interview with Laura Souders. And if you look at the thumbnail, it literally says, how did I get my first client or how did I get my first paid client? Uh, you might want to check that out because um, she explains her process and, and how she got the phone ringing. And it's kind of similar to what I did, um, but it came through networking. Both, both of us found those new clients, those, those paid clients through networking in our community. Her experience um, was through professional networking groups, which you can find in your own uh, community. Hopefully, these are groups that get together. They may be over Zoom now, but hopefully they'll be live soon, where you go and meet with other business owners and share your experience and your business and basically ask for clients because that's what everyone is there to do is to get clients. So it's a very you know open environment where you, you can network and um, you know talk about 
the type of client you want. Remember, we talked about earlier, your niche. This is very, very important when you go into a networking environment. You cannot just go into a group of people and say, I want to organize someone's house. Way too general. So um, get your, your niche and, and you can try out a couple of different things, but make sure when you go in, you have one thing and say, I am looking for um, busy professionals with home offices and I'm going to set them up in a digital organizing with a digital organizing system. So if that is your niche, you know, home offices, uh, paperwork, digital systems, go into a networking group and ask for that very specific thing. Um, and someone might know someone that may relate to them themselves or they may uh, tell you where you can get in touch with that type of clientele. So have your ideal client in mind before you go into a networking event. Um, so Laura's with was with professional networking clubs. Uh, mine was with a, uh, a group of professional organizers and we were meeting as part of, of a NAPO chapter. Uh, actually, the chapter hadn't been yet. I, I later created a chapter. It's kind of a longer story. Um, but yeah, just reached out to some organ. Why don't we have lunch? And we started meeting just a group of like four organizers, eight organizers. It became 12 organizers and 30 organizers. Um, but we just started meeting and talking about like different challenges. And what came of that was I uh, told the group that I uh, like digital organizing. I'm comfortable on a computer. I know all the apps. I like scanning. I can do online banking, all these sort of digital pieces. And they were not that comfortable with that. So what happened happened was they um, allowed me to come in and work with clients that they were already working with. So they came in and they were doing the closets and the attics and kitchens. And I would go and work in the home office space with paper and digital systems. So that was a specialty of mine starting right off off the bat. And I was able to get, you know, 12 to you know 16 hours of work right away once I started networking. So um, and that gave me momentum to reach out and you know start doing other marketing. So uh, I think networking is really key and then getting in front of your ideal audience. Um, so after that, I started doing presentations locally and I would always get leads and, and connections and I would work with people that came to a presentation, um, which is an awesome way to kind of build on that. So start with that ideal client so that you have something that people can kind of grasp on. You know, don't be very vague or general or don't say that you do everything because it's hard for people to refer business to you. Um, I'll thank you guys for sticking in here. I told you it's going to be a long one today, <laughs> but I see a couple of the same names and that that's great. That's great. Uh, we're definitely going to go over our hour today with all of our connection problems. But like I said, it's raining here, so I don't have to worry about my dogs. That's usually a big thing for me at that three o'clock hour. They start scratching on the door and say, let's go, let's go. Um, after taking your complete training certifying, do you have a badge that we can put on our website? Um, OK, so Nikki, a couple of things here. So certif so there's training. So I have um, my training courses and with the introduction to professional organizing, you will get a certification of completion with that. Um, but my courses are designed to get you working and taking clients in a very short period of time. Um, they are not a full certification program and the certification programs that I've done where I do have, if you go to my website, you'll see all my little badges and all my little emblems and, and those things, which I think you're referring to. Um, they, that is a certification program. So I, I did one through NAPO. Um, um, ICD has, has certificates and you can get um, little membership badges and things to put on your website through ICD, NAPO, uh, same thing with, with Marie Kondo. Um, I think with the Kanmari, I may have, um, yeah, you can, there's, I think there's like a logo you can use. I, I put that up on my site and you get like bronze and gold and all these certification levels. So 
Um, yes, my programs are training programs. So nope, I don't have the badges and, and the little things that you can put on your site. My program is just take these courses and start getting paid clients quickly. Then you can use that as a springboard and you'll have income because you've started working to work on a longer certification program um, because a lot of those programs have uh, not all of them. I know there's some people online that say, OK, you're certified and here's a badge. OK, you know that that um, could uh, could help you out. So I think there, there are some like that. Um, but the certifications that I have where I've gotten the little logos and different things are longer programs where you have to go through training and then you have to work a number of hours and then you get that little badge and certification so um that is not my programs my training are not certification programs if that makes sense but they are programs that you can take to get working and then you can work towards a bigger certification so i hope that uh, makes sense. I believe on my channel I have a because um, I get a lot of questions about do I need to be certified before I start working as an organizer? The answer is no. You do not have to be certified to work as an organizer. Um, you just don't. You you can go out and start taking clients. I do recommend that you have you know a business structure set up so you're okay with the tax man and that you have insurance. But as far as certification, it is this isn't an industry where it is required before you start taking clients. Um, but certainly working towards certifications will enrich you as an organizer and, and help you um, expand your business. And I, I think it's great. I've never stopped training, even though I've been doing this for so long. I never stopped taking training myself because I, I just love it. Okay, let me scroll down here. So I swear my, um, I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not skipping around. If I've gone too far down in the comments and you don't see an answer, just put your, put your question back in here because I'm like, um, I got a lot of people here today. Uh, let's see. How do you get clients when you're new in business and not the best at online marketing? So, yeah, I mean, if if you're not that comfortable with the online marketing piece and, and honestly, you guys, I think the online marketing is a little more important if you are doing like nationwide training programs, if you are looking for keynote you know, speaking opportunities and you're going to travel and you're going to speak about organizing or you're going to blog about organizing, there's kind of this whole big online piece. Um, I'm now part of that world. I've been doing that for about three years and kind of the online. So you're going to see I'm, I'm doing a lot of stuff online, particularly with YouTube. You don't have to do all of that to get local clients. So if you are just looking to uh, start making some money as an organizer and working with people in your neighborhood, in your city, in your area, you really want to focus on that local connections, local networking. I think as a minimum, just because it's 2021, you probably have a website and or a Facebook page. And Instagram is where you're going to get a huge bang for your buck with showing off your work. So we talked about that as your portfolio. You don't need to post, you know, five times a day. You don't need a million followers. You just need something that shows, hey, I'm in business. Here's some examples of my work. Here's what I think. Here's what I'm looking for. Um, so keep that in perspective. I know you'll see organizers who have like 200,000 followers on Instagram or a million followers on YouTube. That really is a different business model. And you don't don't have to worry about that so uh, soon. Um, I do have a video on my YouTube channel about setting up a website and sort of like five things to include in a really basic, simple website that you can do on uh, Squarespace. So you might want to check that out. Um, but if, if it's not your thing, just keep it super, super simple, you know, basic website and our Facebook page, maybe Instagram, um, but focus on your local marketing, because that's where you're going to get clients. And then when you get a few clients, you're going to ask those clients for referrals and testimonials, and you're going to take pictures. And then um, you're going to be 
getting, you know, that one client should turn into three clients. And then those three clients should turn into nine clients because you're going to get referrals from your um, existing clients. And you can absolutely build your business that way without being an online um, marketing genius. I feel like I should pop over to the emails too. I don't, I don't want to leave those guys hanging too much. Um, one of my clients asked me for links of products, but she never bought them. I'm so, so I couldn't post good before and after pictures. Let me tell you, uh, should I just buy products and, and ask them for the money? No, no, don't do that <laughs> because they don't have any obligation to pay you. Um, I feel your pain though, Laura. Um, Okay, this is this is a struggle because we're we're not gonna we don't want to just buy products and you know pay for them ourselves. That would be um, expensive, and we don't want to force our clients to buy to to use products. So um, yeah, as far as getting those beautiful pictures on Instagram, I've got a couple of hacks for you guys. And um, spoiler alert: probably at some point this year, I'm gonna put out a little little 10 15 dollar product that's going to kind of explain a lot of this stuff for you on instagram so um but i've got a couple of hacks for instagram so um one is you can absolutely absolutely buy products for your own home and take some really nice pictures because really what you're trying to do is showcase a particular product and that might even inspire your client to have that product. So, you know, I like these Ikea pantry bins. I use them in my own pantry. I'm going to be getting them for my home office closet. So I'm going to take some pictures. I think I have um, a picture on Instagram. And then when I'm working with a client and they're like, I don't know, I don't really want to get products. You know, can I just put some on the shelf? I'll pull up that picture of my own house, you know, of my own, or it's kind of staged, I think, just like on a, uh, on a counter or something. I'll say, but look how, you know, hey, look at this. Does this look good? And that might entice them to to get that product. And then you can certainly take a picture of it in their own home. Um, I've seen organizers go into IKEA or container store and hold up a product and that is their Instagram post. And they're like, hey, isn't this great? So you can still have Instagram posts that are not the perfect before and after picture. Um, also what you can do for your after pictures is get like a, a good, like close up picture of something that you've done, um, may not have product, may not have product, but it's really hard, you know, unless like I said, they're buying all the product and, and also just that their house has to be like well lit and everything has to kind of fall into place and you get these beautiful pictures, um, you you might not be able to, to to get that but what i've noticed is i can kind of zoom in on like some smaller areas like just inside of a drawer or just sort of you know one um sort of bin in in a in a you know kitchen cabinet and i can i can i can show some pretty good you know after photos um but as far as you know the ones you see on instagram where it's beautifully lit and everything is new um I can't say for sure, but I would bet money a lot of those are staged or they're in their own homes or yes, they got that sort of holy grail client that's like, yeah, spend a million dollars to, you know, organize the inside of my refrigerator. Um, it certainly happens, you know, we we saw a lot of that on the home edit show. Um, but yeah, I would still encourage you to do something on your Instagram account, but it, it I, I feel your pain. It is a little bit of a challenge to get that. Um, but yeah, I think you can still get a couple of good pictures or um, I've actually, I had a client one time, this is early on when I was doing my own website and I said, Hey, I'm going to bring some things in from my house, you know, some bins and take some pictures and, and you can do it that way um, or work with a local photographer and, and kind of stage some, some things as well. So you can explain your system, your process, you can show what you can do. But sometimes it's just it's hard to get that beautiful after picture if your client decides they don't want to buy products, which uh, can certainly happen. Um, let's say, yeah, I'll write up my own policy section. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say uh, as far as uh, getting a lawyer to write up 
I don't know, a policy policies, you know, you I would definitely have a lawyer review everything that you're kind of doing to start your business. For me, it's the contracts. Like if I'm actually um, asking an employee or a subcontractor or the client to kind of sign something and um, engage in like a contract. Uh, yeah, you want you want a lawyer to look at that. If it's just your like terms and agreements of how you do business, that's that's just what you're you're telling that person. So it's not. Um, I don't know about the policy section, but definitely any any contracts. Um, and you're going to need a lawyer anyway to help you start your business. So um, if you can find a small business attorney that can kind of give you advice on sort of everything and just meet with them, you know, one time, get everything set up. Um, yeah, thanks, Laura. <laughs> Laura's like, you need to get Catherine's forms class. Yeah, so in my essential forms course, um, which I should... I'll put a link in the video description of this. Um, it might already be there. I think I have a link to the bundle, which includes the forms course. Um, yeah, so I have my terms, I think I call it my terms of agreement, my client agreement. And that is me informing the client of like, this is how I'm going to do business. You know, this is my code of ethics. This is how I receive payment. This is how long my sessions are going to be. Um, you know, this is how I work. And so that is a document that you're sharing with your client saying, hey, you know, here, here's everything that I'm doing. And I do have a sample contract in there for uh, bringing on additional help on a job. And I do, uh, I'm pretty sure I have a big disclosure on it that says, you know, have your own lawyer check this out to make sure it's valid because laws change so much from, you know, locality to locality, um, have that look over. Um, but yeah, that forms course is going to help you get, you know, your contracts in place, your client agreement. Um, I've got some action planning pages. I've got the, the intake form. So when you take that client, you know, phone call or, or Zoom, you have sort of an in-house document where you can start taking notes and yeah, all that good stuff. And it's customizable to your business. So it's sort of a, a template, but you can put in your own logo and, and you'll, you know, make your, your edit. So it's an editable document. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry to be a broken record on this one, but yeah, you're going to have to, you're going to have to talk to a lawyer about, you know, if it's an LLC or sole proprietor, I, I can just tell you how I am set up. I am an LLC. And um, when I talk to organizers, um, I don't know, a, a good bit of my friends in organizing do have an LLC that they had a lawyer help them set up. But you just just have to check, you know, put put together your notes and then talk to your lawyer because it has to do with, you know, how much liability you want to take on and how you're going to pay your taxes and all those fun things. So the nice thing about, you know, getting your business set up and getting it legit, it's it's kind of a one time deal unless you make major you know, changes, but it's something you can kind of take care of over a matter of weeks and get your insurance, get your bank account, know how you're going to pay taxes, um, you know, get your credit card processing set up, get your contract set up. What am I forgetting? Probably something big. Um, and, and yeah, your legal structure. So, you know, all of those things are going to go into creating a legit business. Um, but yeah, don't, don't be a, don't be afraid. <laughs> you just want to get the right advice, you know, accountant, attorney, small business attorney, and, and your local officials, because you may need a business license to operate in your area. You may not, you may need it. So you want to check with your, your local, um, community. Um, how does that work when an organizer gives you a lead? Do you completely take over the client? Yeah. I mean, as far as getting referrals from other organizers, you, you can do this all kinds of ways. And I think I've done it every which way, you know, I've, I've worked as a contractor for another organizer. So if they say, Hey, I want you to come in and help me with a client. And I want you to do, um, a, a lot of times people ask me to do paperwork because I, I think I'm kind of a rare organizer that actually like to do paperwork and I have systems for, you know, digital lifestyle and sorry, I lost my shoe. Um, I have, I have structure and sort of systems for doing paperwork and not all of my kind of organizing colleagues either like to do paperwork or kind of understand, you know, the nuances of, of sort of organizing 
a lot of information and I just happen to be pretty good at that. So um, a couple of things, either they will refer a client to me um, directly or they uh, may hire me to come in as part of a team and okay, you're going to focus on the home office or, or papers and you know, we've got some other people in here doing the kitchen or something. So um, yeah, it's, you know, just that networking. And I know, I just have to say this because this always comes up. I always hear from organizers and they say, yeah, I, I emailed everyone in my, all the organizers in my area. And I said, hi, I, you know, I'm, I'm a new organizer. Can I work for you? And then they didn't hear back or the person says no. Okay, that is not networking. <laughs> you guys, that is not the way you network. Um, networking is a, a softer introduction, kind of a tit for tat, like getting to know that person. What do they specialize in? What do they not specialize in? There's going to be a little dialogue, a little bit of, hey, can I buy you coffee? Like you have to massage these networking relationships, but I promise they will pay off. Um, so don't get discouraged if you, you know, email someone and like, hi, do you hire other organizers? Talk to me. And they go, uh, no, I don't want to talk to you. Um, you just a little softer method, you know, find out maybe are they a part of some networking groups or a NAPO chapter or, you know, where, you know, do you have kind of friends of friends who are professional organizers and, you know, can you, uh, will they take a phone call? You know, can you get, uh, buy them a coffee? Can you take them to lunch? Like, you know, you're going to really want to massage these relationships as part of your networking effort. And then I promise you, you, you will get opportunities because I think every organizer has a type of client they don't want to work with or a type of job that they love. And if they can, refer business out to you, business that they don't want to take. Um, I think that's a win-win. So you're really looking for that win-win with another organizer. How are you going to help them either grow their business as contracting with them or uh, be a referral source? Because we all want to help our clients, but maybe they just don't do paperwork, you know, like in my earlier example. And if they can have another organizer come in and do that, they will do that. So figure out what their special skills are, figure out where your special skills are, and then, you know, start to massage that relationship. Let's see. Yep. Mm -hmm. I started with friends and family. Great place to start. Uh, my family would be too challenging <laughs> to work with because a lot of them are hoarders. So, uh, but friends, great place to get some experience. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so in, with my training, again, my focus is I want you working soon. <laughs> like if you could get a client within a month, awesome. You know, a couple of weeks, like let's go, let's, you know, let's, I want to just kind of provide you with the basics to actually get out and perform jobs and start your marketing um, and all those lovely things. Wow. <laughs> well, good I mean, this says I just got my second paid client. I'm only 17. How to, yeah. Um, well, first of all, congratulations. That's amazing. Um, so I started this business. This may seem old to you, but when I started my business, I was 28 and I got a little bit of that resistance from some of my clients who were a bit older and they were like, you know, what do you know? And you haven't had this life experience or whatever. And, um, you know, I certainly had a little bit of that, but I will tell you most clients, you know, use that age to an, an asset, um, because some of your clients will say, you know, I can't move everything around in the garage, or I will tell you even now, I will go into clients' houses and I will go from the attic to the basement and I will do that running up and down. And um, I think they think I'm a little younger than I actually am, but um, I think I'm still, still pretty fit. Um, but I think that age can be a bit of an asset when you are working on these bigger jobs and you have to move a lot of stuff around. So, you know, just think of what your assets are. Um, the other thing that I feel is like a little useful that I bring to like, of course, my senior clients still think I'm very young are um, the productivity apps and the um, like online ways to streamline uh, productivity. 
I know that's um, could be something, but you know, I, I, whatever your age, I, I think you, you certainly have some assets and um, you just need to find clients that you can partner with and who will appreciate that. And congratulations on getting your business started. Um, so young. Yeah. So how to deal with clients who are unwilling to help or go through their own things? Yeah. Um, I think one, you have to kind of, you have to set the expectation in the beginning of that relationship. So um, if you guys have taken my intro to professional organizing course, um, I talk about that pre-screening and those initial phone calls that I'm going to have with clients. And I've, like an example of a client I won't work with and I find out during the pre-screening is when they say, I'm keeping everything. I don't want to get rid of anything and you just need to figure out how to make this work, which is pretty impossible if you, you know, understand the volume of things that people have in their house. So, um, one, I would absolutely do uh, a pre-screen call and sort of set some expectations and make sure that you're a good fit for that client. So I may say something like, hey, you know, are you able to set aside three hours to go through the items in your closet so that I can help you, you know, declutter? You know, you're really going to need to to take that time for our time together to be productive. So you can certainly set some expectations going in. Um, I have a couple of, of tricks for my clients who kind of wander off or don't want to be part of the process. You know, I still go back to my GDP, which is my gather and sort. I can do that on my own because I'm just putting things into like categories and pulling things out. So sometimes I will say, you know, if I have that busy client or an ADD client and I know they're going to wander off, um, I say, I'm going to, I'm going to gather and sort and I kind of do one category and then I pull them in and we go through the decision making process and, you know, they have to be a part of that. The only thing, you know, if, if, you know, you might not really want to work with someone who's not going to make any decisions because you're actually not going to really be able to organize their house that well. I mean, you, you can, but, um, it's tough because now you're just containing all of these things that they may not use and you don't know what their priorities are and it's it's difficult and it's not my favorite thing to do. I'll tell you that. Um, but yeah, you you can try to do that. Just shorten that decision making period, you know, in a three hour session, ask them to just be a part of that you know 30 minute decision making. And then you can load up the donations. You can you know put get product. You can put things back. So um you know, you, you can do a little bit, um, kind of work around those clients who aren't quite available, but I gotta be honest with you. If, um, a session is so much better when they participate, like it's so much better and you're going to have so many more breakthroughs and you get so much more done, you know, when you're helping kind of negotiate the things in their life. And so you might, um, have a talk with them and say, you know, I just don't feel like our time is productive and, I don't feel like you're getting the most value out of our session together um, unless you can participate a little bit more. Do you think you can do that? And then, you know, set up your next session and see if they can find a time in their schedule to, you know, open up. So going to have to have some honest conversations with people and decide if it's something that that you can do. Um. You know, I have no idea. We just got a container store in Richmond like a couple of months ago. It's our first our first container store. I don't know if there's one in Virginia Beach. I have to check out check out the website. Um, let's see. I saw Home Edit. I'm definitely influenced by the Home Edit, but your expectations are so much more realistic. Yeah, I mean, the, the home, home Edit is a very specific type of organizing, just like the Marie Kondo method is a very specific type of organizing, just like working with hoarders has a different level of expectation. So again, we're kind of getting into that, you know, um, what type of client are you attracting? Um, I know there's organizers who have fantastic businesses using that home edit style. And when I'm coaching, you know, sort of uh, people who want to work more in that design element, you have to show the client that, you know, you, you can do this. And I think it's okay to pull pictures from your own house to pull pictures from, um, 
you know, do isolated pictures of, of products and, and you can, um, you can even use pictures that you have found on Instagram, but please give that person a photo credit that actually helps them build their site as well. So if you have some inspirational pictures, you know, just make sure that you give them, um, credit. I mean, you could share a picture on your Instagram page of something from the home edits, uh, their Instagram in the comments, you know, photo edit, uh, link to their, you know, do a mention of the home edit and, and praise them for this picture. And then you could say, hi, you know, if you'd like this vibe and feel, uh, in your home, please call me. I'm ready to help you with that. So, um, that is perfectly fine, but you're definitely going to want to attract people who are um, have a high budget for profit. Uh, I've been looking at some of these refrigerator organizing <laughs> pictures that you see on you know Instagram and Pinterest, and you guys, there's like hundreds of dollars worth of products in in some of these refrigerators, which is lovely. Uh, you know, nothing against that, but if you are um, you you need to specifically uh, attract the type of client who is willing to spend thousands of dollars on products and then your time to put them in. And yes, they are absolutely out there. I have worked with them. Um, but just keep that in mind. You need to clear out jobs and then expect to attract the type of client who wants the home edit like look and feel. So just keep that in mind. Um, Uh, hold on, I'm gonna. <laughs> I love this. So 66 should be okay. Yeah, um, you guys plan your organizing business around your lifestyle. So think about if you love being online and you like taking pictures and you love social media, grow your business that way. You know, if your asset is, hey, I'm young and fit and I can move all the stuff around in your house and I can go all day, you know, you're gonna use want to use that uh, in your marketing. If, uh, and I'm, I'm feeling this too, like, am I really going to want to, I'm, well, I'm planning, let's just say I'm planning for when I'm doing this business at 66. And I'll tell you, it'll look a little bit different than it did when I was doing this business in my twenties. Um, and I'd probably focus more on paperwork, which is a nice sit down job and also, um, blogging, writing, speaking. So, you know, there's lots of ways to make uh, money in the organizing business, um, other than taking certain types of jobs. So, you can um, scale this business, which is what I love about it because I hope to be in business in, let's say I've been in business in my 20s, 30s, 40s, and I hope to also be in business in my 60s, but it'll probably look a little different than um, what it is today. Let's see. Yeah, so... The question about introducing products to a client and incorporating them, do you buy them before, after, or do you charge, how do you charge for products? Yeah, this question is actually so popular that I did do a video on, um, what's it called? If you just go to my YouTube channel and put in containers, I think it'll come up, but it's like sort of, do you buy containers ahead of time? And, and that'll answer a lot of these questions. Um, but yes, yeah, so GDP, I gather and sort like items. So I, I've, I've done a consultation and I've talked to the person on the phone and I kind of know what I'm getting into and I go in to do my project session and we're working in the kitchen and I go in, I, I sort through the kitchen. I ask them to make decisions so we can eliminate duplications and eliminate all the clutter, you know, stuff they're not using. And then I'm going to put the products in and I'm, you know, Obviously, the reason you do that is because if, well, one, most places that I work are are cluttered, obviously, and not everything is going to fit. So if I just came in with like shoe boxes and bins, I, I'm still not going to make it happen. Like it's not a problem of not enough containers. It's usually a problem of too much stuff. So um, that's what I'm dealing with and probably what a lot of you guys are dealing with as well which is just the, the volume of things in someone's house. So um, I don't come in with products first. I do a downsizing, decluttering process. And then 
as part of my put away, which is GDP, the P is a put away, then I'm going to order my products and do my labels and make everything nice and, and pretty and put away. So um, I get this question. Sometimes people are like, well, how can you do all that in like three hours? Which really you can't unless it's kind of a small project. So um, what I'm, I may be doing in like a large area like a kitchen is I'm going to do one session where I do the sorting, decision making, and then I'm going to kind of stage things or then I'm going to order product. So I may even order the product. I like to order the product at the client's house and have it delivered. And then I'm going to come back for another session and I'm going to put everything away. But it's going to be really easy because we've already downsized. We've already decluttered. I know where things are going to go. I already have the layout of the kitchen and the spices are going here and, you know, the prep tools are going here. So I've already done all of that in a session. And then when I come back with product, it's like, boom, boom, boom. I could just put it in. If you try to do the product first, just I, I would not recommend doing that because it's going to be too much stuff. You may end up moving things around. So if you get a specific product for a cabinet to like hold spices and then you realize oh actually i need that cabinet for something else and i'm going to put spices in a drawer you actually need a drawer organizer for spices but you're not even going to know that until you get everything laid out so products last products last and um if it's a if it's really expensive stuff i i will try to get the client to just you know order it when i'm with them um if it's a couple of little things i can get on amazon target i will or ikea um, kind of like under $100, I will um, probably just order them on my own account and, and bring them and then add that to the invoice. So, but you know, if they're getting $500 in hangers, <laughs> I would like them to pay directly for that instead of, you know, putting it on my own account. But that's, that's just sort of a personal choice. Okay, this is the, the, this is a long one, guys. Um, thank you for sticking with me. I just want to answer a couple of questions that I have on email because I know that um, people are going to watch that on the replay. So let me just go in and see what else I have here. We've talked about so much. And I know some of you guys who emailed questions are actually here. Um, okay, we did that one. And I'm just checking my email. See, did I answer this one? Um, yeah, um, a couple of questions about business licenses. I think we've talked about that. Um, it's really specific to your county. And the same for taxes. I know some of you guys are talking about like being on the border of two different states and are wondering who you pay taxes to. Answer is, I don't know. <laughs> that is an excellent question question for your accountant because every state in the U.S. has different income tax laws and, you know, it may be where you live. It may be where you're working. I have no idea for your state, um, but I do know that something you need is an accountant for when you're starting your business. So that's an excellent question. Um, yeah, these are some questions from Margaret, who actually lives not too far from me and best way to find clients. Yeah, so uh, I think we've talked about clients networking and um, getting in front of your ideal audience. So yeah, Margaret, if, if I was coaching you, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, first thing I'd want to know is who is your ideal client? Who are you trying to connect with and work with? And then we're going to build a, a marketing plan around that. That is absolutely the key to it. Um, I think there might be another question here in email um, that I didn't get to, but I will probably just send out some individual emails because I think our um, time is up here. But thank you so much for um, joining me. If I didn't get to your question, please shoot me an email. Um, I think our next live, um, so I'm, I'm going to be on the road a little bit actually for a couple of weeks starting at the end of this month. So you might not hear from me until about mid August, but then I am going to be launching that six week group coaching program, which I've been telling you guys about. So look out for emails around that time. And I think in September we'll, we'll start our, our weekly calls. So um, please, 
uh, look out for those emails. I'll probably do a couple of free workshops around that um, kind of launching that program. So that will be some some good training, some good education. And um, yeah, don't overthink things and enjoy yourself and just keep in mind that you can change from, you know, you might set up something, doesn't quite work for you and it's okay to switch gears and try something different. Even when you're looking at the type of client that you want to work for. Um, yeah, when I started, I thought I would be working more with those busy executives. And then I realized, wow, busy executives don't have time to work with me. <laughs> so um, I actually have worked for a lot more seniors over the years than, than I ever thought I would, or, um, you know, information organizing, that type of thing. So it's okay to, you know, switch things up as you go along, but just focus on one thing in the beginning until you build your clientele. You're welcome. All right, guys. Well, I'll be in touch in a couple of weeks and check out my other videos to um, answer more questions and have a great day.